you, let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 6 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 through 13. These are our familiar verses. The title of the message is Stop Surrendering to Sin. Stop Surrendering to Sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. Now, these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmur, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that he may be able to bear it. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Amen. Amen. So stop surrendering to sin. Sin is a problem that you and I would have to deal with for the rest of our lives and until we go to heaven. And someone compares sin to those addicted sins, right? Like alcoholism, like gambling. It's never over. Just because you're saved, and the number one thing is that if you want to have victory over sin, whoever you are, you first need to get saved by trusting Jesus Christ and Him alone as your Lord and Savior. You know, unsaved people, they'll try to win, have victory over sin through going through those anonymous meetings. They go alcoholics, or AA meetings, yeah. GA meetings, right? DA meetings, right? Do they have like a drugs anonymous, you know? <laughs> or, you know, those, those things are set up so that people could defeat that sin. However, it's very hard because it's, it's something that, in a way, your brain needs, you know? Like if people who get addicted to alcohol, you know, they have some chemical coming out, you know, it kind of messes you up. Yes. And it's never over. And as Christians, you and I have to recognize that when we fight against sin, when we deal with sin, it's something that's not going to stop until, it's, until we're either raptured or we're dead, right? So it's something that you and I have to deal with always. And you and I are saved from hell once and for all. However, our flesh is weak, you know? It's never cured. Just think of it as like that. You know, we're going to, you know, your flesh will constantly keep you from doing 
thinks of God. And that's just what it wants to do. It wants to have pleasure and satisfaction contrary to the spirit. Then if you realize that I have a sin problem, like how alcoholics have you know, problems with their alcohols, then it's a serious problem. If you don't realize that you have that serious sin problem on a daily basis, then there's no hope for you. You're going to lose to sin every single day. Yes. In order for you to realize that, okay, in order for me to have a victory over sin, I must first recognize that I have a sin problem or sin problems. You know, sometimes people are so blinded by their justification and because they're, they're not as bad as someone next to them, they think they're okay. Well, you're not. We always say your, your person that you always would need to compare to is not your pastor, it's not your wife, it's not your children, it's not your coworker, it's not your boss, it's not you know, Biden, it's not anybody else. You have to compare yourself to Lord Jesus Christ. And you will always fall short. Yes. And when you fall short, you know that you need help. Yes. A lot of times, you know, these, you know, psychiatry, psychologists, you know, anonymous groups, they just copy what the Bible says, right? You know, they just go, okay, realize that you're a sinner, right? You must get right. But they don't give you the final solution where you have to trust Christ for that solution. They just say, trust in yourself, and you have a support system, right? If you feel like you're going to drink again, call this number, yeah. right? If you feel like you're going to go to the slot machine again, call this number, right? If you feel like you know, you're going to do drugs, call this number, right? However, that doesn't happen. That's why there's always relapse after relapse after relapse. I mean, alcohol, alcoholic could be free of alcohol for maybe years after years after years, but once they have that trigger, they could go back to it very easily. And when they go back to it, they go deeper and deeper. That's what sin is. That's what sin does to you. If you don't recognize that you have that sin problem in you on a daily basis, once you start committing that certain sin, there's no stopping you. That's the hard part. You start surrendering to sin, and it never stops. That surrender goes one day, two days, three days, four days, weeks, months, years after years after years. Think about that. As a Christian, saved by grace, as a Christian, where you have Holy Ghost living inside of you, as a Christian, where you have Christ living in you, and you're struggling year after year after year after year, or month after month after month, month, month. Why? Because you are constantly surrendering to sin. And many times it happens because you never really, really admit that you have that problem. It's always like half-hearted, right? Like as if... You know, like a marriage, right? You know, like your wife doesn't want you to do this. You're like, okay, I'm not going to do it. But if you don't really mean it and really from bottom of the heart to change, you're going to do it again. And your wife goes, hey, you said you weren't going to do it. Why are you doing it again? I'm like, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. And then weeks later, months later, same situation happens, and you do it again. And your wife goes, did you really mean it when you said you weren't going to do it? Same thing with husband. Husband will tell wife, hey, you know, honey, you know, do this, you know, for me, right? He goes, she didn't do it. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I'll do it next time. I'm sorry. I forgot. I'll do it next time. I'm really going to do it next time. And then doesn't do it. What's happening? What's happening with you? What's happening with me? What's happening with people around us? We're not wholly committed, and we're not sincere. You know, sincerity comes from 100%, you know, sold out from your heart. You know, when people get married, right? You know, we have a couple getting married this week. 
I mean, it has to be sincere. You don't just get married just to get married, right? And this kind of have a bad ending. But at least when you start, you got to have that 100% commitment towards each other. Then you might have a chance, you know, in this day and age, right, to have a you know, happy and joyous married life. But when it comes to sin, do you really deal with it like life or death situation where you're super committed to it? Where, man, I really can't stand this sin anymore. Or when it presents itself to you, are you like, man, you're constantly swaying. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Say if you're struggling with, you know, alcohol. Best thing to do is what? The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Yeah, just stay away. Just stay away. That's the solution, right? If you're listening, you know, if you want like the perfect answer, then how do I stop sinning, right? You know, like the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Don't let yourself be in a place where the sin presents itself to you. If you know that you might buy an alcohol, if you're in alcohol section of the market, then don't go there. Why do you even present yourself to it, right? I mean, if you do drugs and you get enticed by it, you always fall to it, then don't go to this vending machines or marijuana places, right? Why would you even go there? Like, if you know that you're going to fall and if you're weak to it, just don't do it at all. Don't go. However, is that what you do on a normal basis? Is that what you do on a regular basis? Is that something that you do all the time? Obviously not. I mean, people who have, you know, sexual sins all the time, they can't avoid themselves from those temptations, those websites, right? Like you have your phone, which is really, really one of the worst things that could have happened to a human being, you know, invention of cell phones, besides from talking. That's good. Well, you know, with all of this apps, everything that you can do on a phone, it's very bad. There's more bad than good. You see little kids, right? And, you know, they have access to it. Unless you have like a parental guide, you know. And they still, yeah, they still find a way to get through those. And what do you think is going to happen to those kids? Once they start seeing all those, you know, wicked photos, wicked videos as they grow up, do you think they could actually become a, you know, pure, you know, holy girl and boys? Of course not. It becomes ingrained in their brain that it is okay. And it's the fault of, obviously, the person themselves, but it's a lot of times it's fault of the parents for allowing your kids to be exposed to those wicked things. And once you start, you know, like that famous potato chip, right? Once you start, you can't stop. I mean, it's so true. The sin, once you start, you just can't stop. Like that, is it Pringles, right? Yes. You eat, usually you don't stop with one, right? You tend to eat as much as you can until your wife or your husband or your kids say, hey, stop, you know, save some for me, right? <laughs> But when it comes to sin, you continue and continue and continue until you see the bottom, until you have none. And what happens? You realize that, man, I've gone through the whole thing. I shouldn't have gone through the whole thing. What have I done? And you have your self-pity where, man, it, it had to happen because, you know, I was in a tough spot. I was going through you know, some hardships in my life. So I needed to find some source of joy. And that's where some Christians fall 
where they're like, okay, what gives me joy and happiness? Music. And they start turning on to, you know, those wicked music like love songs, you know, going to those radio stations, you know, or they want to be pumped up. They listen to rock and roll. They listen to hip hop. But that's all contrary to the spirit. That's not what is going to glorify God with those bad backbeats. Then when you realize that, and when you look at yourself, you know when you start, you can't stop, whoever you are. It's just almost impossible. Because once you give in to your flesh, once you surrender to sin, sin's going to finish what it started. And that's the scary part. When sin starts in your life, it's never going to stop. It has to see the end. And your flesh will see the end to it. When you look at your experiences, when, when was the last time you actually stopped in the middle of sin? Right? Very rare. You actually go through it. And then you come back, you know, regret it, you know, you repent sometimes, right? Or you forget about it, and then you just have a depressed days for a little bit, and then life starts over for you. But that is not a Christian life that you should live. Constantly surrendering to sin day after day after day after day, week after week, week after week, months after month. I mean, Bible clearly says, be holy for I am holy in 1 Peter 1.16. That's God's command. God said you and I have to be holy, separated from sin. But why is it that you and I constantly surrender to sin? Why? Because you are not 100% committed to stopping yourself from surrendering to sin. If you, you told yourself, of course, you need help of the Lord, because you, know, you and I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. We have victory through Christ. Every time when that sin presents itself, where Bible says, you know, God has given us way out, right? God will never give us something that we cannot handle, which means that you and I have no excuses, first of all, when it comes to sin. You can't say, Lord, man, that sin, you and I know I could never defeat. You and I know I could never endure. The Lord's like, what, the, what, the, what did I say in my Bible, right? Perfect word of God, King James Bible. You know, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able? So you and I have no excuse. I mean, we can't, we can't say to each other, you can't say to your husband, you can't say to your wife, you can't say to your children or your parents, oh, you know, honey, you know, dad, you know, mom, knowing me, you know, I can't, I can't defeat it, right? You know, you have that loser attitude already. I'm like, wow, you know, I had to do it, you know, because I'm weak to it. But it's your fault that you put yourself in that situation in the first place. I mean, as Christians, again, Bible just simply says, simple. I mean, word of God is a lot of times it's just black and white. You know? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Then stay away from it. If you're going to commit sin looking at your cell phones all day, then throw your cell phone away. Yes. Right? If you know for sure that if you're on your phone, I, I mean, I just heard average American spends like seven hours online, including probably work, right? So you're at work, you're online. Come home, you're online, right? On your cell phone, on your laptop, on your you know, iPad. So it's amazing how much time you spend on the internet. And as you know, internet it's not a place that you should spend seven hours unless you're listening to seven hours of Bible study and preaching, which none of you guys do. Maybe, maybe one or two, especially people who's listening. I know they spend a lot of time 
but you still have to have a balanced life, right? Don't listen to this seven hours a day without doing your work, you know, doing your family duties, you know, doing other things that you're supposed to do. So you have to have a balanced life. And devil will sometimes lead you into that direction as well, where since I'm talking about it, I mean, you're, you think you're doing something for the Lord all the time, and you neglect all the things that you're supposed to do. Right. Taking care of the family as head of the household, you know, love your husband and love your wife like you should, and obey your parents like you should as children, right? And work hard at work, and wherever you go, you know, be an exemplary Christian. But no, my goal in life is to just increase the knowledge of the Word of God. Good, but it's not good. Why? Because you're neglecting everything else. And that's how the devil will get you a lot of times. He'll make you fall and surrender to one certain things and neglecting everything else. That's not a good Christian life. Imagine if, you know, Brother Richard, all he did, he's so fired up for the Lord with Brother Calvin together. Forget about work. Forget about, you know, eating with the family. They go door knocking eight hours a day. You know? They're like, you know what? We led 30 people to the Lord. But their wives are like, where were you when I needed you, right? You know, kids are like, Daddy, how come you don't play with me anymore? If their answer can't be like, well, I'm doing for the, something for the Lord. So you have to understand. No, you have to live a balanced Christian life. Yes. Amen. I mean, but that's, that's like extreme. But at least, you know, you know where you're doing something for the Lord. But a lot of times as Christians, you're the other way. You're, you're not even doing something for the Lord. You're just constantly sinning. Maybe you're on your phone looking at dirty pictures, dirty videos, or going to wicked sites, you know. And then you're just spending all your time there. And your family's like, Daddy, Mommy, you know, why don't you spend some time with me? And you're like, oh, I'm doing something important. <laughs> uh, that's like a very bad excuse, but, you know. And, and a lot of times, family don't want to fight. Okay, you do you. I'll do what I do, kids do what they do, and they just live their simple ways, all of them. Because do you think a neglected wife would want to do something holy and clean for the Lord at that moment? Do you think neglected husband would want to do something good and you know, glorifying God at that time? Or children? No. Everybody's going to start thinking, man, if he's going to do it, if she's going to do it, I'm going to do it too. You know, we're all going to it's a snowball effect. Yeah. And then once you start surrendering to sin, your family, everybody starts surrendering to sin. And then the whole house is burning with sin. Good, and you can't really stop it. Why does that happen again? It's because you do not take this seriously enough. Good, like sin yes. should be life or death thing, yes. battle Amen. every single day. People who defeat alcoholism, what do you think? What do, do you think they just overnight, like, okay, I'm not going to drink. I'm done. Ask, ask former alcoholics if that was how it worked. They fought their urges every second, day and night, to defeat it. Yes. I mean, that, we're talking about unsaved people, or, or even saved people. But as the Christians... You have sin problem and admit it. Yeah. And after you admit it, you have to ingrate it in your brain that, you know what? If that thing presents itself to my eyes, I'm going to fall. So I'm going to do whatever I can, Lord, help me to abstain from it, yes. avoid Amen. from it. If you are weak at 30 things, and stay away from dirty things. If your phone calls you to do dirty things, throw it away. There are 2G phones out there. It's not, what do you call it? It's not a touch screen. But you could still call. I mean, that's what kids need. 
right? Give it to the young kids. They don't need, you know, all those apps there. There's elementary kids, you know, doing this social media stuff, coming out and doing all this wicked stuff, you know, dress very inappropriately, you know, you know, bringing shame to their whole family and everybody. But they think it's okay. They think it's cool because everybody else is doing it in their elementary kids. I mean, forget it. Now it's middle school, high school. You know, those things you never fathom like 20 years ago how kids will behave. But it's only going to get worse and worse because even in Christian families, you allow yourself and your children, your wives and husband to surrender to sin more and more yes. on a daily basis. As you come to church, as you grow in the Word of God, as you get convicted through preachings, Woo! you should be more holier Amen. than dirtier, right? Man, you and I really need to get into that shower, the hot, take a really, really hot bath, and really get rid of all of our dirt spiritually. Yes. Once and for all, through the Word of God, through prayer, and making that whole commitment to the Lord, that Lord, I mean, I'm sick and tired of, you know, surrendering myself to these sins over and over. Great. Especially if you're older people, you know it's been happening for years and years and years in your life. Because you're never cured until you go to heaven. Right. That means that it's happening on a daily basis. And it's something that you have to make a daily decision every single day. And if you don't make daily decision every day when you wake up, you're going to fall. Yes. You're going to have many, many falling days. And then with falling days, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're going to get closer to the Lord? Or you're going to be farther away from the Lord? That's why the sole purpose of you and I is what? You know, bring glory to God. And in order to do that, the best way you and I know how is having a right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In order to have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, you got to stop surrendering to sin. Right. When will you ever realize? Isn't it about time? For some, you've been saved for years and years and tens of years. Isn't it about time you solve and you make commitment, and you say, I'm going to stop surrendering to sin because it's done enough damage in my life. It's done enough damage in my family's life. It's done enough damage to my children, everybody else. When you think that deeply, when you are that sincere, when you have that heart-to-heart -heart talk with the Lord, then you will have chance to have victory over sin. You will have chance to be that Christian who has a victorious Christian life. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? You'll never get out of this cycle. Yes. Literally, you know, I kind of mentioned about highs and lows. You'll never get out of it. You have your highs, and you're going to have these deep lows. Like those withdrawals, right? Like major withdrawals. Yes. And in order to fulfill that withdrawal, what do you do? You fulfill it with that sin. Whether it's alcohol, whether it's you know, sexual lust, whether it's dirty stuff, or whatever it is, you're going to start fulfilling it again to feel that high. Then you go like this, like this, like this, like this. And then one time you go all the way down, and there's going to be a time where you can't get out anymore. I mean, God giving you so many chances. And then God says, you know what? Man, my, my word says, Romans 8, 13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. You have to pay for it, son. You have to pay for it. You know? Whom the Lord loveth, he chastises, right? Yes. He has to punish you. Yes. Then sometimes those punishments, is so deep, those scars will never leave you. Imagine if you and I are walking around, and because of our sinfulness, sin problems, we have that X mark in our face. You know, maybe back in the day, like you know, how Cain had a mark, right? You know, that's another story. But imagine if you and I have like a X here, X here, and then you and I have to look at that all of our life. Because every single day, you know, we look at mirrors to wash our face, right? And then that will be a 
reminder what sin can do to you. But before that happens, shouldn't you and I get right with the Lord? And then make sure that, Lord, help me. I want to have victory over sin. Help me stop surrendering to sin. When you are sincere to the Lord, again, don't be half-hearted. Just because, you know, your heart is a little bit moving this morning because you have some conviction from the Holy Spirit. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it feels good. It feels good to listen to this message, you know. It gives me some hope and stuff. But okay, when I get home, I'm still going to open my phone, go to that website. When I go to market, I'm still going to walk through that aisle. I'm still going to do this and that. Then you will never get right with the Lord. You got to hear it. Put it in your heart and make commitment to change and put that into action. Amen. Then you will definitely, definitely have chance to have victory over sin. And then when you and I stop surrendering to sin, what do you think we'll be doing? We'll be surrendering to the Lord. Amen. And when you and I are surrendering to the Lord, how much fruitful and how much, how much more joy you think we can have in our life? You know, I'll end with this. You struggle with sin, and then you've been living in sin for, say, six straight days. But on the seventh day, you stopped. And you feel good. Something's not, you, you, you don't feel as bad. You're like, man, this is, this is a good feeling, right? And it's not a feeling of high of, you know, doing, say, drugs or low of not doing drugs. But this is actually a joy that God's giving you because you're living a holier life. Man, okay, this feels good. Man, I, maybe I could bring more glory to God. You know yes. what? I'm thinking more spiritual stuff now. Man, I want that soul to get saved. I want that brother and sister to have a victory over sin. Yes. Man, I don't want them to burn in hell. And then you go, with that, that one day, after six days of sinning, and then one day you get right. And the second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, and you constantly have victory over sin, and your daily decision to have victory over sin by trusting the Lord and relying on the Lord, studying the Word of God, listening to preaching, and you're like, wow, this life is worth the living. When was the last time? You truly, you know, felt like, man, this life is worth the living. You want that? Stop surrendering to sin. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it's a battle, Lord. And after you get saved, it's not going to be an easy road for a Christian, Lord God. The sin that easily beset us will continue to haunt us, continue to be there for temptation, and it will be the downfall for many Christians, Lord. And Father, I pray that we'll stop surrendering to sin. Number one is just trusting in you, Lord, and making daily decisions, and help us to really sincerely from the bottom of our heart commit to you, Lord, and thinking about those sins that has, you know, held us down for years and years, Help us to have a life or death decision where I will not do that again. I will not do that again. Because that's just bringing bad name to you. It saddens the Holy Ghost. It makes our Christian life and Christian walk, you know, downtrodden, Lord God. Help us to have victory over sin, Lord. Help us to sincerely, from bottom of heart, stop surrendering to sin. And we can do all things through Christ who is strengthening us, Lord. I pray that you'll be with everyone here and listening, Lord, whatever they are, wherever their spiritual state is, Lord God. I pray that all of us will realize and recognize that we're here on earth just for one thing, to bring glory to your name, Lord God. Help us to get more serious about dealing with sin and doing something, doing more for you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone.